So I'm just going to talk about different types of assessment just to start with, just to start with the headlines. Then I'm going to give us some examples and some things that we can think about. These headlines here uh, do sound quite similar. So we've got assessment for learning, assessment as learning, and assessment of learning. Just starting with that top one, when we think about formative assessment or assessing in real time or assessing as we're in a classroom full of children, we're assessing for learning. So we're, we're making sure it is, is an absolute headline that the children are learning, that we need to be sure that our children are learning. And if they are not, we need to know what to do. The formative part of it is because we're being informed about what our next step should be as teachers, as practitioners, as support staff, just as adults that are assisting the learning of the children. So when we look at assessment for learning, we put it under the banner of formative assessment. It's the information that we receive in real time in our classrooms with our children. It may not be in our classroom, but I'll use that sort of term generically, wherever the learning is taking place with you and your children. It might also help us understand whether or not what we're using, maybe the tools of our trade or what we're saying, is effective. Do we know that just because I'm saying it aloud, do we know that the children understand it? Now, sometimes we hear about coverage in class, like I've, I've heard this many times where people talk about, oh, yes, we've covered that. I'm not really bothered about coverage. What I am bothered about is whether or not the children have learned it. And those are the questions that we need to ask in order to find out as to whether or not we're being successful in what we're doing, supporting children's learning. That second one, assessment as learning, is a really, really important step in children's understanding and certainly working towards a deep understanding of a new idea or a deepening of an understanding of an existing idea. So it talks about here when pupils actively monitor their own maths learning. What we mean when we're talking about this isn't just a phrase that might be used to a whole class. And I've been guilty of doing this, and I know how inefficient it is, saying something like, okay, do you all get that? Asking that sort of question is a really poor assessment question because the likelihood is if I've got a classroom of primary school children or actually in secondary school or anyone, uh, the, the, the response is going to be, no one's going to put their hand up straight and we go, no, I haven't got a clue. Didn't listen, didn't know, don't get it. You know, the likelihood of that actually happening is small. So we're going to look at assessment as learning as something slightly different. The other really crucial part that we need to know is assessment of learning. So summative assessment, and these are the types of assessments that we might do at the end of the term or halfway through the year or at the end of the year, or the statutory assessments that may take place wherever you're uh, looking from, wherever you are at the moment. Assessment of learning is a real skill in itself, because if it's just a binary, how many people got this right, then that's really unsophisticated. Wow. Okay, and really good um, summative assessments are incredibly well written. So we can even analyze the types of understanding that the children have through a summative assessment without necessarily having that verbal or physical feedback that we may receive on a daily basis in our classrooms. If you enjoyed the video, then why not hit the like button? Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so to stay up to date with our latest videos. If you want to check out more videos, then click on the right to dive into another topic. Thanks for watching.